Hey there, everybody. We came upon this iris today, and I wanted to talk about this interesting leaf spot that it has. Little brown spots surrounded by what's called a watermark. Uh, one thing that's telling, you can tell if it's a bacteria or a fungus, because bacteria tend to grow inside the leaves and will um, be the shape of the veins of the plant. Funguses pay no attention to the veins of the plant, so they will go over, around, make circles, or all kinds of shapes. But since the veins of an iris go straight up, you can tell it's crossing several veins. So I knew this was a fungus, um, not a bacteria. The fungus is called Didymalina macrospora. Um, it can be most severe if an iris is in mild, damp weather, which we have had quite mild weather this year. And then it's also even worse if the airflow is poor and the diseased leaves are allowed to accumulate, which this bed was allowed to be completely filled with, le with weeds. So the plant itself was surrounded with weeds, which would restrict the airflow. And also you can see inside here that the dead leaf tissue has not been removed for a while. So this is a prime candidate to receive this fungus. Easiest way to control it is to remove all of the dead leaves um, and then keep it clean. <clears throat> Sanitation is really important with diseases like this. You want to re remove all of the dead leaves. We, we will definitely cut off all these dead ones like this. We'll probably leave this for a little while. As soon as it's done blooming, we'll take off all of the affected uh, stems. And then in the winter, it's going to be even more important to cut the fans and remove all of this diseased tissue because the fungus overwinters in the leaves and in all of the different plant parts. So I've never dealt with this fungus before, but it doesn't sound like one that's going to be terribly difficult to control. So we'll get this cleaned up and uh, see what happens as, uh, as time goes by. It's really wet under here, which is the perfect environment for a fungus to live in. Wet, cool, not much airflow. It's exactly where they like to live. Once we get this cleaned out, I think it'll be much better for the plant. I'll say one more thing before I stop filming. I don't like to wear gloves when I garden very much. When you're working with irises, especially irises with dried leaves, you have to be super careful because if your hand slides and you're not wearing gloves, it will be the worst, most painful paper cut you've ever had. So be super careful. When you grab an iris leaf, make sure to grab it firmly. Do not let it slide. Or, you know, you could just be like a normal person who wears gloves, but I don't like to be normal. I don't like gardening gloves. It's going to make my hand all sweaty. Think. I think 
that's about as good as we're going to get for today. A few things. One, my pruners are now contaminated with this fungus, so I have to make sure I wash my pruners. The other thing is that this fungus is susceptible to fungicides, so I'm going to try a baking soda and soap spray on it just to see if I can stop it from spreading further. I took all of the dead leaves and whatnot off of the bottom. See all this airflow now? Look at, you can see almost all the way through it. And then I also cut off all the dead leaves on the top because they weren't helping the iris at all. They weren't photosynthesizing. These ones are still photosynthesizing and they still have quite a bit of fungus, but they're not dead. So I'm leaving them um, for the most part. And then this year, in the fall, when we come to cut these down, we're going to go pretty much all the way down to get as much of the fungus as we can, if it's still here. Hopefully it's cleared up by then, but uh, we'll follow up on that in the fall. And let's see, anything else? I'll go get my spray ready. All right, so here are the chemicals in my spray bottle. You ready for this? Soap and baking soda. That's it. Spray, good coating of baking soda. The soap makes it stick. I'm also going to spray my tool. Now the wind is blowing right now, and this is drifting back and spraying in the, in the face, but do I care? No, it's dawn. Blue dawn and baking soda. Those are my two ingredients. That's really about it. Now, I've never tried baking soda on this fungus. I've honestly never even seen it before today. But uh, every, all the research I did online said that it'll, uh, it's treatable with fungicides. And uh, that's what I use baking soda for. So again, the, the baking soda raises the pH, which most pathogens, fungus included, require a low pH, so a very acidic environment, in order to thrive. And if you put baking soda on it, which is very alkaline, it'll raise that pH and uh, take away that favorable environment for the pathogen. So that's what's happening here. And the dish soap I just use in this case to make it stick. I do have to be careful not to spray any beneficial insects with the soap, like I saw several ladybugs on here. But I also uncovered a lot of families of earwigs, which are, for plants, they're not beneficial, they're not bad, either way, they just, they eat dead, decaying leaf matter, which is what, this was full of dead, decaying leaf matter, so of course there were lots of earwigs in here, um, and there were a few spiders, so I'm not going to try to kill off any of them, I don't, you know, I like spiders, and earwigs aren't hurting anything, so... Um, I don't want to spray them with the soap, but uh, but that's what's making the baking soda stick to the plant. So that's that, and we'll come back in a few months and see how this guy's doing. See you later.